What was a surcoat? What was its function? And what were the benefits to wearing one? Those questions and more we're going to answer in this video. G'day guys, my name is Ben and welcome to Medieval Mayhem. On this channel we do lots of reviews into medieval equipment, we do lots of uh, DIY videos into costuming and furniture, and in today's video we're going to look at the surcoat. A surcoat is a simple linen garment which was worn on top of male armour and started to be introduced during the 12th century, thereabouts. And generally speaking, at the time they were very simple, but it evolved throughout the uh, but it evolved throughout the medieval period. They ranged in length from pretty much ankle length to just above the knee, typically. More often than not, they were sleeveless, and typically they had a split in the front to enable them to be worn whilst riding horses. Soldiers throughout time spend a great deal of time reflecting and reflecting on themselves and their values, their morals and their ethics. They spend a lot of time in battle preparation considering what is about to occur, how things are going to work and what uh, is the purpose of their, or what they're doing. On a surcoat you'll find a lot of the basic sort of heraldic devices whether that be lions or the fleur-de-lis weapons all that kind of thing and these things had a great deal of meaning and significance to the person wearing them. They represented their family name, they represented their purpose, their, um, they represented the person that they were uh, serving, whether that be a lord, a noble, uh, or the, the king himself, and it represented their cause. So a knight would spend a great deal of time considering these symbols and looking at their aspirations. Are they living up to their name? Are they representing their cause in the right way? It's an expression of value and it's an expression of significance and so uh, it would be easily recognizable by the people not only around them in their contemporaries within the military orders but also it would be significant also to the enemy because the enemy could see them and easily recognize that that person is from this particular military order or family and therefore has a reputation that uh, of, of, of prowess and efficiency on the battlefield. And I believe that a knight would spend a lot of time questioning whether they were uh, fulfilling the values and representing themselves in the right way. Much like many, many soldiers do today, uh, every pretty much soldier today uh, in, including in law enforcement and so on, has their national flag usually on their left sleeve or about their body. They also have particular unit patches and so on. And, and these symbols, as simple as they are, uh, represent a fantastic amount of effort and achievement in order to earn their place amongst these units. And so, um, again, there's that, that continuance of the symbology and the importance of that symbology. Edward Oakeshott described the surcoat as being about um, keeping the rain and the sun off armour. And I, I understand what he's saying, but I actually strongly disagree with him. As a reenactor in Australia, I've fought many times uh, in the sun, and the chainmail armour heats up to a very high temperature, uh, and it can be very difficult to wear even over a gambeson or something similar. So I don't tend to think that a, a sleeveless surcoat really keeps the heat off the armour. In terms of rain, well anyone really knows that any, anyone really knows that um, the, the sweat and so on does just as much damage as any rain would do and that goes from the body outwards. So um, again I don't really feel that the, um, the surcoat really is going to protect someone from the rain. Whereas Charles Phillips describes the surcoat as being an important heraldic display. He describes the surcoat as a status symbol and he describes knights as seeking to enhance their reputation on the battlefield. Well a surcoat is how a knight would be recognised and therefore during a battle uh, a, a knight or a soldier would want to make sure that uh, they were seen to be doing the right thing, seen to be proactive, seen to be a leader, seen to be living up to the values and the ethics and the morals that are laid out in the chivalric codes. So I feel very strongly 
that uh, a surcoat is about a surcoat is about reinforcing the values that the knight represented and reinforcing uh, the knight's purpose. So a knight would be able to feel that their efforts and their strategies um, would be recognized because there were heralds on the battlefield and the heralds would record the details of which knights actually did which things. And you can see this in even things like the Bayou Tapestry because it clearly details particular individuals and what those particular individuals were doing at the time during the battle. And so if I was a knight, if I was in battle, I would want to make sure that I was being recorded for the right reasons and not for running away or not for doing the wrong thing. Alrighty guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, this video. Please like, subscribe and share and I'll catch you in my next video.